Okay. Would you prefer if people put uh, questions in the chat or would you wait like to wait until the end of the program itself? Yeah, let's let's um, do the questions towards the end. I mean, and if people want to put their questions in the chat and we we look at those at the end as well, that's fine. Okay, great. Okay, great. So, like I said, um, this is Be Ready Red Cross Preparedness Essentials. Um, our presenters today are Paul Gass and Chitra uh, Van Katraman. And um, as Paul requested, if you can put your questions in the chat or wait till the end. Um, Paul and Chitra, welcome. Um, and please uh, begin the presentation. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you to Paul Sippany Library for um, inviting us and uh, allowing us to, to, to present tonight. Um, uh, I am uh, uh, accompanied, if you like, virtually by Chitra, um, who is uh, an outstanding volunteer of American Red Cross, um, is a preparedness presenter in many of our programs, uh, community preparedness programs, as well as a disaster responder as well. And um, so uh, we welcome you to this Be Red Cross Ready presentation. Um, we're going to talk about um, general preparedness essentials uh, for um, disasters of, of many different types. Uh, and then we're going to uh, pivot and talk specifically about hurricane preparedness. Um, I guess, as we all know, that um, we've been dealing with um, uh, Hurricane Ida and the, and the remnants of that as uh, she, she went out the door and, and gave us kind of a big punch in the gut in New Jersey. And um, we are in full response mode in Red Cross in New Jersey, um, helping people across the entire central and northern parts of the state uh, from the uh, flash flooding and river flooding. Uh, as we speak, we've got folks out delivering disaster emergency supplies and uh, feeding. Um, we had some shelters open as well. Um, I think we still got a couple open also uh, and, and just helping people generally with um, many different types of needs. So um, lots going on at the moment. So this is kind of um, an important moment to talk about hurricane preparedness because we are not out of the uh, hurricane season quite yet. So, uh, and, and fingers crossed, of course, that we don't have anything else hit New Jersey, but we, uh, it's better to be prepared, right? So let's get into it a little bit. Um, hopefully you can see the change of uh, slide there. If we can do, yep, all good, uh, marvelous. So, so the fact is that disasters happen. They happen often. They happen with little or no warning. They happen anywhere at any time. And every year, communities across the entire United States face numerous types of disaster. Uh, it could be hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, winter storms, wildfire burning thousands of square miles, and, and home fires uh, every day impacting thousands of households. So, um, you know, it's, it's something we really need to think about. Um, what is classed as a disaster? Well, a disaster, it, it's a disaster if normal response systems are overwhelmed, uh, if people are getting hurt and property is damaged or destroyed. Uh, and that's what I do in um, the times of response. I pivot from community preparedness like this to um, damage assessment. So that's what I do in the Red Cross. That's my role in, in times of disaster relief operations, such as the one we're doing now in New Jersey. So um, let's look at, at what kind of hazards we face in, in our area here in New Jersey. Um, in our region, past experience tells us that we face a number of hazards that can have a huge impact on our community. Um, and let's just think of some in New Jersey. Home fires, right, are all too common in New Jersey, um, especially in our crowded urban spaces with, with many apartments and buildings close together. Um, they could be uh, um, multifamily homes, townhomes, single family homes. Hurricanes. New Jersey is considered uh, a hurricane state along with the entire eastern seaboard. Uh, so uh, we are susceptible to hurricanes. And we had certainly in 2011, we had Irene. Uh, in 2012, uh, we had um, Superstorm Sandy, which was a combination of a, a, a dying hurricane, if you like, and, and a, another storm system colliding with it, giving it some extra energy 
uh, and causing some catastrophic damage on certainly along the shore uh, and, and a little bit inland as well. I see yes in 2020 um, and of course Ida as we are experiencing as we speak. Um, we talk about flooding as well. You know, we have a substantial river system in, in New Jersey, uh, along with an extensive coastline. So water is a big factor in New Jersey, uh, whether it's major storm surge from the ocean um, or flash flooding, uh, as we've seen in, in our river systems inland. Um, wildfires. Could we have wildfires in New Jersey? I, I think it's certainly a threat, especially in the northwest part of the state or down in the Pine Barrens. Um, it's very, very dry um, uh, environment and um, it's um, got a lot of kindling and, and in the right conditions. That is certainly a threat with wildfires. We see extreme heat in hot summers in New Jersey. We see severe winters with snow and rain in New Jersey. We see uh, thunderstorms. I, I don't know about anyone else, but I think uh, in recent months, I've seen a lot of thunderstorms in New Jersey, more than I think I've seen in previous years. Um, so we're seeing that a lot as well. Uh, bringing, you know, flash flooding and, and trees down and, and stuff like that. And let's talk about tornadoes. Although they're rare in New Jersey, heck, we just had, as a result of Ida, an EF3 tornado hit um, South Jersey uh, and caused substantial damage, uh, destroying many homes or, or certainly creating major damage. Um, that's unusual to have such a strong tornado as an EF3 tornado, not since the 80s have we seen that. Normally, tornadoes in New Jersey are, are kind of a, an EF0 or one maybe, uh, but I've definitely seen an uptick in the last decade in the number of tornadoes um, uh, in the state as well. So there's a lot of things we've got to be uh, thinking about in New Jersey. Um, I don't think that, you know, I'm not trying to, to put fear into everybody and say, hey, let's all move out of Jersey. It's far too dangerous here. Um, not, nothing like that. You know, I think wherever we go, we have these hazards and, uh, you know, threatening us from time to time. And, and what we need to do is just to adapt and know about these hazards and how we can perhaps react to them and better prepare ourselves in the event of these disasters. Uh, and in any disasters that we've just talked about, a lot of people assume that someone else is going to be there to help. And the reality is resources just aren't there to support everyone immediately. It's just not possible. And so I think there has to be a realization that we have to be a little bit self-sufficient for a short period of time uh, until that um, support and resource and help arrives uh, to, to give us more support. Um, you know, first responders, disaster organizations, such as Red Cross, government agencies and, and hospitals even are, you know, they're, they're taking shelter like the rest of us during a disaster event so that they can respond quickly and, 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 and efficiently straight after the disaster has passed. But the truth is we, we will have to depend upon ourselves. Why? Because roads may be impassable. Uh, utilities may be unavailable. Uh, hospitals and first responders could be overwhelmed and things like banks and grocery stores and gas stations, pharmacies and that may be closed due to the disaster as well. We also need to think about helping others, community, right? And, and, and helping ourselves first and then helping our neighbors second. Um, and, and if we did more of that community self-help, you know, supporting each other in the neighborhood and the local community. We are absolutely going to increase our resiliency in the face of disasters. And that's ultimately what we want to try and achieve um, with many of these preparedness programs and, 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 and such is a degree of resiliency to disasters because we know that they happen. We know when the hurricane season passes, we'll get into the winter and we'll start to think about you know, um, snowstorms and, and, and the like as well. So, you know, we know these cycles come along every so often. So we should be able to pivot accordingly. So one of the mantras in Red Cross is really uh, three things um, in Be Red Cross Ready. Get in a kit, 
So putting a kit together that contains the supplies you would need at home or can easily carry with you should you have to evacuate. Uh, making a plan. Identify the steps you will take to respond to specific disasters. Um, and what will your household do? Where will you go? How will you communicate with each other? Those are all things we've got to think about as well. Um, um, being better informed. You know, finding good quality information is important keeping us informed about what's happening with with an unfolding disaster event how can we find out about resources how can we find out about help those are all kinds of things that we need to think about um, uh, when we're thinking about general preparedness and, and so let's take a little bit of a closer look at some of the, those three mantras that we talk about getting a kit um, if a disaster strikes in, you, in, in your community, you might not have access to food and water, electricity or a medical facility, or even the drugstore shut for a short while. So preparing a disaster kit for your household is an important step to keep everyone safe and healthy at the end of the day. Um, consider assembling maybe two types of kit um, for supplies. Put one kit that um, has everything you need to stay at home. So you could have it in a box or something like that that's, that's away in your basement or in, in, in a cupboard um, that has got enough emergency supplies for maybe three days. Um, and uh, But we want to think about things that we can gather longer term, perhaps. In Sandy, it wasn't unusual to be out of power between 7 and 21 days was the average in Sandy. So having a two-week two supply of, 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 of kit isn't a bad starting point. Um, of course, that depends on space and you know where you live and whether you have the space to do that. But it's certainly something to think about. Um, and, and then the other kit, we, all, we often call it um, a go bag. If you have to evacuate from your home due to rising water levels, for example, as we've seen, a go bag with some, uh, like a smaller version of, of your stay at home kit um, is, is something that you could have, you know, should contain something you need, you need for three days, maybe some important documents um, uh, um, and, and, and that kind of stuff as well. It's, you know, so think about what's important to you and put that in your go bag or in your stay kit. Everybody has their own priorities and what what kinds of things should be in a bag but certainly we think about water we think about food we think about flashlights um batteries perhaps the right type of batteries for the flashlight um, um a, a a wind up crank radio or battery radio could be the only means of getting information if the internet's down or cables down um so these are the kind of things to think about maybe a, a toilet roll or two as well um a container to put water in um so um these are the, some of the things to think about when you're thinking about um, putting a kit together but customize the kit to meet your particular needs and the needs of your household um as we said you know um I think you should have a kit for, for, for every member of the family if you're going to evacuate. I, I think about children, right? I think about my daughters and, and having a kit together with their favorite toys in and some coloring books and stuff like that for, so for them. Um, often children get scared and, and nervous when things like thunderstorms happen. I just have to mention the word thunderstorm and my my, my daughter's cowering <laughs> away mm -hmm. because she's she's scared of that. So I have to try and walk that through with her. And and, and so they, they are scared of these things because they don't know what they are sometimes. And um, so, you know, education is important in that respect, right? But, you know, I want them to also feel safe and secure. So familiar things um, in their go bag is important if we have to evacuate. They've got their favorite cuddly toy and some coloring books and stuff things that are familiar to them um likewise if we've got somebody that's um you know um dependent on medical supplies we're going to think about that right so if you're able to have those medical supplies some spare medical supplies um that's something to think about as well and certainly um if you're um uh in a position where you would need assistance you know in, in terms of um uh, evacuating your home there's, there's things like um, Register Ready. Register Ready is a statewide um, program where you can register, register your address details and your name. 
um, and um, it's a system where um, the um, authorities, agencies can reach out to you in times of disaster to see if you need assistance in, in evacuating, for example. Um, it's not a foolproof system, but it's certainly another tool to help people uh, do that. So that's um, Register Ready uh, is the program, and it's run by the state of New Jersey. Um, we talk about water. We think about one gallon per person per day is, is kind of what we should be thinking about. That's a lot of water, right? Um, but that's certainly uh, what we need to think about, whether we're, we're using that water to obviously for drinking water and, and for cleaning. But we need to make sure that our water intake um, is maintained throughout um, any unstable period during a disaster. First aid kits, that's another great thing to have in your kit as well. Um, a lot of people have, you know, uh, in their home home kits, uh, you know, um, tins of food, you know, if they're self-opening, great. But if they're not, have a manual tin opener. Lots of people have electric tin openers, but if there's no electric, it's not going to work. So a manual can opener, something simple like that. You don't have to spend a lot of money, go to the dollar store, you know, buy a couple of those, put them in your, your kit. You're probably going to use them a couple of times. So does it really matter if they break? Not really. So don't need to spend a lot of money on these kits, you know, um, you, you, you're hopefully never going to use the stuff in it, but if you are, uh, you know, get some stuff that, you, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money. If you are going to have water and, and food in your kit, make sure that you rotate it. Don't let it expire. So keep an eye on those expiry dates um, and, and make sure you swap them out um, uh, as you need to. Um, certainly, I think um, that's probably the you know the main things in a kit that we want to talk about um and we want to talk about you know uh, a kit for everywhere right um so maybe you're in the car um so have a small bag of supplies in the car even if it's just snacks and water if you get stuck in a you know a, an epic track traffic jam because of the weather uh, or because of a snowstorm um just having you know a flashlight um some batteries and some snacks and water can make a world of difference and a blanket as well. You know, just put them in the, in the trunk of your car, in the back of your car. And, you, and you've got those there, you know, just to see you through for a, a few hours. Um, if you, if you're stuck in, in, in those kind of situations, um, fl uh, jumper cables are always good as well. Um, if you, in case you have a flat battery, I certainly have jumper cables in my car. Um, so, and, and of course I always, you know, first aid kits everywhere. I, you know, have them in your kit, have them in your car, have them at work. You know, um, uh, I have first aid kits everywhere, so they're always at hand for me. So, and we talk about making a plan. Yeah, we've got to know what we're going to do in times of disaster. And if you are in in a, in your household and the members of your household, we all want to be doing the right thing and and, and not tripping over each other, right? So. It depends what hazard it is. Different hazards require you to take different actions. For instance, if during a tornado watch or warning, a tornado warning, and we've had several of those in New Jersey in recent months and, and years, that's not unusual anymore. So having a tornado warning in your area, you need to immediately move to either a basement or interior room on the lowest floor with no windows. Um, and stay there until that warning has passed. There are many tools now that can you can set up on your on your cell phone that can and do that. We have a Red Cross emergency app, and you can set up alerts for any type of hazards. Um, and should those warnings come through, they'll alert you on the phone. I think even now the state is now pushing through alerts right through the cell phone system. So I'm starting to get alerts now I didn't even know I was going to get. And I think that's a great thing to do. And maybe you've seen as well the um, the alerts that come on the TV sometimes in New Jersey. All of a sudden, the program will be interrupted and they're testing it, right? Um, I, those kinds of things are, are proactive things the state's trying to do in a quick way to get to as many, uh, get information to as many people as possible. So um, those uh, kinds of um, alert systems, alert apps, are really are um, a game changer, I think, in a positive way. Um, talk with everyone in your house about how to prepare for and respond to hazards that are most likely to affect you. 
uh, identify responsibilities for each member of the household, perhaps, and plan to work together as a team, as you would do, uh, you know, at school or at work or, or anywhere else, right? You know, so delegate different roles to different folks, maybe have somebody looking after the vehicles, for example, have somebody, you know, the children get them involved looking after the pets, you're going to take your pets with you should you have to evacuate. So, hey, what about their food and water also, uh, you know, um, so have the children involved in that so that they they look their responsibility is looking after the, the pets and, and getting them sorted out and, and, and having everything they need as well. Um, those important documents. This is one thing I really try to home talk about um, gathering all your important documents in one file. Um, I think is extremely important. Um, if you have to evacuate your home, such as the flooding we've seen, which has been unprecedented, grabbing that folder with all your important documents is going to be such a big plus for you in times of recovery, trying to recover back from, from that disaster. Having that those insurance documents and birth certificates and all that kind of stuff as well. Maybe pictures as well of your valuable items. Um, take pictures of those as well. If you have all of that kind of stuff, you're talking to maybe your insurance company that after the fact, they're all going to be very helpful to you to speed up your recovery process. Also think about secondary areas to have them. If you're able to and you've got the technical ability to do so or know someone that's got the technical ability to do so, um, download, scan some of those documents download them on into the what's called the cloud and um you know um put them on a usb thumb drive um as well and put that in your preparedness kit in your in your go bag or something um also maybe take um photocopies of important documents and give them to family members that you trust or, or friends that you trust uh for safekeeping if they live in a different part of the state so there's things like that that you can do but those important documents are really going to help uh, in that uh, process in term, trying to recover from from what's been been probably a traumatic experience. And just makes things just a little bit easier, right? And that's, we're all looking for something that's to be a little bit easier. Um, individuals with access and functional needs may need to prepare a little bit differently, right? So create a personal support network that can help you plan and provide assistance if a disaster happens. Um, that's extremely important, not just one person, but maybe include a two or three people in your support network. Um, you know, have a do a personal assessment of, of functional abilities and possible needs during and after a disaster situation. Uh, and make sure you practice your disaster plans, um, your evacuation plans. Um, if you're um, with your personal support network, at least once or twice a year. Um, Generally speaking, think about, you know, if you have to evacuate your home, where are you going to go to? Are you going to go to family and friends uh, out of town? Are you going to go to a motel um, that's pet friendly, perhaps? Do your homework and find where they are um, before a disaster strikes. That's part of that planning process. And obviously, we talked about pets. Don't don't forget to include your pets. OK, OK. Um, Sometimes there's nowhere else to go but a shelter, and that's Red Cross's role in sheltering, right? And we've opened certainly shelters uh, in, in, in this particular response. Um, we're, we're, we're the safety net. There's nothing else. We're nowhere else for people to go. Then, you know, in some of the most affected areas, we set up a shelter. Uh, you know, we know that people, you know, a shelter is, you know, a public shelter is the last resort place they probably want to go. We understand that, but we're there for those people that have nowhere else to go. Uh, and, and, and like I say, we're a bit of a safety net. Know that if you come to a, any public shelter, whether it's Red Cross run or otherwise, certainly in Red Cross shelters, service animals are the only animals allowed in a Red Cross shelter. Otherwise, you um, there, there are um, things that we we try to do and partner with, you know, um, local uh, county um, animal um, uh, response teams that have these trailers where they can put pets in. We try to um, accommodate where we can, have a separate area for maybe for, for pets where we can. Um, but uh, in the actual shelter itself, only service animals are allowed.
Um, include the right details in your plan, right? How to evacuate, where to meet, how to communicate, important records, where you're going to stay, um, uh, and, and um, how long you're going to shelter in place for before you yourself decide to evacuate. You don't need to wait for someone to tell you to evacuate. If you look around and you see for yourself, okay, I'm not feeling safe anymore. That's the time to evacuate, okay? Um, and, and try and find somewhere safer. Um, that's difficult sometime in the middle of a storm, okay? But if you've got rising floodwaters, that might be the time to get out, okay? So again, you know, you need to be your self-assessor, right? No one is going to be there immediately to help you. So you need to be self-sufficient. You need to be aware of your surroundings. You need to be aware of what's going on around you. So from time to time, check, you know, if there's a lot of rain and stuff, you know, is the level getting higher or, or is it okay? Are you in a flood zone to start with? That's the probably the starting point, right? Find out whether your home is in a flood zone or not. Um, you, you should know if you're in a flood zone and, and, and have the appropriate insurance, but a lot of people don't, right? And um, if you're close to a flood zone even, um, that's something to think about as well. I talked about safeguarding those critical documents, right? And these are just some of the things you should think about in those important documents in a file, um, you know, from birth certificates to deeds, mortgages, photos of loved ones, right? Updated every six months, especially for children, um, photographs of valuables, medication lists, um, that kind of stuff, all right? Insurance policies, social security cards and the like. And being better informed, know where to get your information and get your information from reliable sources. Um, uh, you know, social media plays a huge role in informing people now. Um, it's almost immediate information. Uh, and so a lot of people are now are going to social media. But that's not your only port of call in terms of uh, being better informed. You've got the traditional, more traditional means of, of cable TV or radio, um, you know, um, phoning friends if, if they're in the disaster area or the storms in their area, calling them up and saying, how bad is it? And if you know it's coming your way. Um, so there's lots of different ways of doing that. And but go to reliable sources, you know, and I think about government uh, sources. Um, I think about the Weather Channel, if you're watching that on cable, if you've got that or Weather Nation, um, um, they're two good channels or your local uh, news channels as well. If there's a th if there's a threat in your area, be sure they're going to be covering it on local news. So uh, whether that's your ABC sevens or, or your um your Fox 4s or your News 12s, um, they're going to give uh, some great local information uh, that maybe the Weather Channel and, and Weather Nation might not, but they will give you the big overview. But you want some local knowledge as well, they're the places to go. And of course, good old-fashioned radio, right? AM, FM, whatever, you know, to try and get some information as well. Plenty of tools out there, like I said, plenty of apps that can help you. All these, all these agencies have um, weather stations and stuff have, have apps. Um, so, uh, you know, um, download the apps, follow them. If you've got a Twitter account, follow the Twitter accounts of uh, various weather, um, weather channels or news channels. Um, Red Cross has its own app, which is free to download from uh, any Apple App Store or Google Play. Um, and, and goes through what to do before, during, and after. There's alert systems on there for you. All kinds of great stuff on there. Make an emergency contact card. Um, we used to have these. You used to be able to download load these. I don't think you can anymore, but you don't need a fancy Red Cross logo on it. You know, it's good. We have our you know numbers in our cell phone but it's good to write maybe some of those numbers you're not familiar of on a piece of paper and put it in your purse or your wallet as well so let's pivot now to hurricanes right and um we we couldn't be more uh, applicable in in terms of timing right um i wish i'd given this presentation in a lot of respects you know, a, a week ago or two weeks ago, but we will continue to give these presentations where we can. But um, um, I'm certainly happy I'm still doing this and, and trying to get the word out to be better prepared. What is a tropical cyclone? Because that's what we're talking about. So it's, it's, it's um, 
it's it's a generic name given to a rotating organized system of clouds and thunderstorms right uh, and once a tropical cyclone reaches a maximum of sustained winds of 74 miles an hour or or higher it's classified as a hurricane um, sometimes they call it a cyclone or hurricane depending on where the storm originates in the world and we'll look at that in a moment but in the north atlantic the caribbean sea the gulf of mexico and even in the north and eastern pacific um, um, it's called a you know it's called a hurricane um, in the northwest pacific it's called a typhoon you know so it, it changes um, but um, yeah we um, here in New Jersey, we, we certainly look at that as um, uh, as a hurricane. So as we continue about uh, talking about what is a cyclone, um, we also uh, think about um, uh, and you can see there on the map, right? So you can see where we, you know, the parts of the world they call it a typhoon, a cyclone, a hurricane. They're all cyclones. They're just given different names in different parts of the world. So whether you so if you hear hurricane or you hear cyclone, it's the same same thing. Um, we've got the categories here in terms of the hurricane scale, right? So we start off with a tropical depression. Well, a little bit before then, but we we look at a tropical depression, and that's when the wind speeds start to to, to mount, um, and often those tropical depressions turn into a tropical storm. Uh, when it gets to a tropical storm, that's when we name the storms. Well, we don't name them, but the National Hurricane Center based in Miami, Florida, name the storm. And they usually publish a, a list of names at the beginning of every hurricane season. And um, last year we went through it quite a lot, so and some. So I'll show you that later. Um, so 39, between 39 and 73 miles an hour, whatever. I mean, how do we know what? How much it is but that's how they calculate it in the science world and then um we look at five different categories of hurricane category one two are are, are um uh, hurricanes and category three four and five are major hurricanes so you're going to see huge damage of the three four or five um and category one and two you're going to certainly going to see some damage too and even a tropical storm is going to cause um some, some significant damage as well uh, certainly, we've seen a tropical depression just um, appear off off the east coast. Um, and it's called Mindy, um, and 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 that's you know causing you know some 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 certainly strong winds and such. So it certainly is enough to to um, disrupt the day a little bit for sure. Um, Ida, when it made landfall in 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 uh, Louisiana, um, was a Category Four hurricane, high end Category Four hurricane, verging on a Cat Five. So and who knows when all said and done, and they look at the data, they may well recategorize it as a Cat Five, which they sometimes do. So uh, it, it packed a hell of a punch and a lot of rain and hundreds of miles wide in diameter, um, and and caused a lot of um, devastation inland. Usually, when it gets inland, it's it it, it certainly weakens pretty rapidly. But Ida was a little bit more um, resilient to that and, and kept its strength quite a long way in land. And certainly we see what happened on its way out to the Atlantic. Right. Um, so, yeah, um, we it's good to know how they categorize storms. So when you're watching the Weather Channel or the Weather Nation, you know what a cat one or a cat two means. Um, but the greatest threat to life safety comes from the water. Um, and if, if you're not convinced of that now in New Jersey, then I, I don't know what to tell you, but, um, in the form of storm surge or inland flooding, right. And so what did we see in New Jersey and Sandy? We saw a huge storm surge, a full moon makes, means a high tide, um, and storm surge on top of that. My gosh, we saw a lot of flooding on the shore this time round. We saw inland flash flooding. An epic amount of rain fell um, to an already reasonably saturated ground from the thunderstorms we've experienced in recent months as well. So uh, we are now, and we we th we thought we were going to get more storms last night as well. So we were all kind of on edge a little bit, looking at all the river gauges for the Passaic River and the Raritan and stuff, and seeing whether we were going to have a secondary situation. Luckily, the storm. Um, spread out quite a lot and 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 spared us uh, 
that scenario. So we're, we're very thankful for that. But water is the number one problem. And, and um, we often ignore that. We think about the wind and the, the, the you know, the, 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 the stuff that, that, that gets the headlines, right? You know, buildings toppling over and trees toppling over. That's bad, of course, as well. But it's that water that comes in. It creeps in, and you don't know. And before you know it, you're you so you know, yeah, you're up to your waist in in water sometimes because it comes in from nowhere. Water moves so fast, so that's really what you've got to be careful of, uh, is the water. Hurricane season in the Atlantic goes from June, beginning of June, all the way to the end of November. In the Pacific, it's mid May through November, um, but um, we're seeing. Storms occur now even in May, um, not June. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the hurricane season goes to May for the Atlantic in, in the next few years. Um, certainly, um, we're seeing more activity earlier than we have before. The peak season of hurricane in the from the Atlantic um, basin is between August and October. So we are right in the uh, middle of peak period for hurricanes. Um, uh, it is relatively calm at the moment. We do have Hurricane Larry out in the Atlantic at the moment, hopefully staying out in the Atlantic. Um, we're not sure quite what he's doing. Um, he keeps changing his mind a little bit, but um, he's still far enough out for us not to be too worried about Larry right now. But things can pop up without notice sometimes, with little notice, um, just with Ida was very fast in developing. This is from last year. And you can see all the storms here. You can see how many, the purple are the major hurricanes, the red are the, the, the regular hurricanes, if there's anything such a thing as a regular and then tropical storms. And, and you can see some of the tracks of that. Laura, Delta, uh, we saw that. Uh, I see Ias, I, I get, always get that wrong. You can see the red one there tracking up through New Jersey and the East Coast. Fay affected New Jersey as well up there. Um, so uh, a very busy 2020 season, a record breaking season, uh, unfortunately. Sorry, did I miss a slide there? No, I'm good. So this is 2020 versus 2021, right? And, um, you know, um, the 2021 season looks pretty similar to the 2020 season. Not much difference at all in terms of predictions from the National um, Hurricane Center and the um, NOAA, the National Weather Service. In 2020, we actually have 30 named storms, seven hurricanes and six major hurricanes that affected uh, U.S. assets and, and uh, the mainland. And you can see in 2021, we are already at N for Nicholas. Um, so we are moving through these um, named storms pretty fast. And uh, we're still, um, you know, only in September. So I, I again, we're seeing a, a similar rate of storms as we did in 2021. And a lot of people say, well, what happens once we get to the end? Well, that happened last year. And we then started using the Greek alphabet as a secondary list. This year, they've got rid of the Greek alphabet and they've just got another named list in the, in the wings ready to go um, and should should um, that happen. So, you know, I don't know, um, but I would not be surprised if we got to the end of the list, that's for sure, uh, based on what we're seeing and what has gone previously. So things are really ticking up. Is that all to do with climate change? I think it has something to do with it, yes. Um, what causes that? Could be a number of reasons. I'm not going to get into that that discussion, but um, there's no denying that the climate is changing, and we're getting we're seeing more and more of these types of storms than we had done previously. We're seeing more and more wildfire um, activity. Uh, we're seeing more tornadoes in places we hadn't seen them before. So the climate changes, right? You know, and we know that the earth changes all the time. Mother Nature is doing its thing. Um, but we've got to react to that one way or the other. 
And so we have to become more self-sufficient. We have to become collectively as communities and neighbors are more resilient and, and know what's going on. And, and that's part of the key is just knowing what's going on and what the hazards uh, uh, that could affect you, because that's going to put you in such a better place than being um, in the dark about these things. We talked about the greatest threat to life safety comes from the water, right? So this is just a diagram of storm surge and, and inland flooding, uh, the rise in seawater level. Um, you know, um, storm surge is the, often the greatest threat to life and property on coastal uh, um, um, uh, uh, states. And it poses a significant threat for drowning, obviously. It can travel several miles inland. We've seen that before, right? And storm surge is the rise in the seawater level caused by a storm. Um, and, um, you know, if that tide is at high tide because we've got a full moon, you know, we've got some some real problems there. So know what storm surge is, you know, and it's pretty straightforward. But know that storm surge, ocean surge is also a term is used sometimes for that is a very real threat. Um, and um, as is flash flooding uh, inland. Other potential hazards. Great example, Ida, unfortunately, we saw strong winds, we saw trees down, we saw trees fall on houses, uh, we saw um, tornadoes, we saw that EF3 tornado in South Jersey. Um, we didn't see the waves and rip currents, luckily, because it came from within uh, the continental US, um, but certainly had an effect on that, right? And even if we have a hurricane that's far out to sea, it often has effect on the rip currents on the off the Jersey, Jersey coast, for sure. So think about those additional hazards as well. It sounds all doom and gloom. I, I, I know it sounds all doom and gloom here, but it's not. The more we're aware, the better off we can react, right? So, you know, uh, please don't think this is, oh, my God, this is Armageddon. It's not. Um, but, you know, we need to be better prepared is, is, is what I'm getting at. And uh, hopefully that's coming across. We need to know what the potential impacts are so we can react to it, right? Um, home and building damages, winds and floods, power going off, water being contaminated or going off, gas communication outages we saw all of that whether it's sandy ida whatever drinking water contamination sewage overflows sewage backups right blocked or destroyed roads uh leaving areas inaccessible for maybe short periods of time but uh important periods in in the disaster timeline uh, preventing the movement of supplies immediately and help Shortages of food, bottled water, medicine, sometimes a shortage of gas. Louisiana saw, saw a huge uh, shortage of gas um, and, 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 and that kind of stuff and food. Um, it's a very real problem, uh, you know, uh, medical facilities closing um, as a result. And then you put COVID on top of all of that. My goodness, you know, uh, our hospitals are already bursting. And then you put a, you know, a disaster on top of that, um, you know, we're just overrun, you know, we just can't cut a break. And, and so, you know, it is what it is. There's not much we can do about it except better prepare ourselves and be aware of what's going on and try and look, us, look after ourselves and our neighbors as best we can. So now is the time to prepare. Don't wait around. Think about getting the kit together, making a plan, being better informed. You need to do that stuff now uh, and not put it off. We have busy lives. We're doing lots of different things. But now is the time to, to put those things into action and, and be better prepared. Um, so, you know, uh, I can't emphasize it enough. Think about what are you going to do before a disaster strikes. Understand those hazards that you're likely to face. Uh, you know, um, find out you know where your evacuation routes are. Where do you find, for example, the evacuation routes in every county in New Jersey? On the New Jersey Office of Emergency Management website, New Jersey OEM, which is run by the state police. So go to that website. 
they there, somewhere there anyway, they list all the evacuation routes on PDFs for all the counties. They're often main roads that we all know and love, like no all all know and love like Route 22 or something. Uh, I don't know whether anyone loves Route 22, but uh, uh, you know these main routes are, are, are routes are going to be where you want to head for. And that may sound counterintuitive because that's where all the traffic's going to be, right? But that's also where you can probably get more help. If you try to go around the storm on these minor roads, you could encounter flooding. You could get three quarters of the way down to where you want to go. And there's a down tree across the road when you're going to turn around and go all the way back. So, you know, um, going to uh, using the highways and the byway, you know, the, the main highways is, is the sensible, you know, route to take. Because if you know to help, there's people around. OK. Um, uh, do you live in an area vulnerable to storm surge? Think about that as well. Do you live in an area prone to flooding? Uh, low-lying area close to a river or stream do you live in an area prone to um, hurricane force winds or even tornadoes tornadoes are difficult to predict right they could happen in any thunderstorm in the right circumstances anywhere so you know um, it, you know it, it's difficult to predict whether you're in a tornado area or not but i would suggest that new jersey is ripe for tornadoes now after seeing what i've seen this year um if you live in a flood zone, look into flood insurance, please. Um, think about contents insurance as well. Uh, if you rent, think about renter's insurance. It doesn't cost a lot of money, but my gosh, it's going to help you should you lose some of your um, possessions, okay? Learn how to turn off utilities if you have to. But remember, if you turn off the gas in New Jersey, you need a qualified gas technician to turn it back on. But if you're going to evacuate your home for a long period of time, you're like, hey, I'm out of here. There's a big storm coming to Jersey. I'm out of here. I'm going north of Vermont. I'm not going to be back for a month. You know, it might be worth turning the gas off and dealing with it when you come back. That's your choice. But learn how to turn the utilities off. Uh it's, it's, it could, you know, uh, be the difference between losing your house and saving your house. OK, um, think about things like generators. People get generators all the time. Great stuff, right? But only if it's put in correctly. Do not have generators inside the house, inside the garage. The generators need to be outside and they should be wired in by a qualified technician. OK, they can do that. Someone that knows what they're doing. I certainly don't. Um, so um, generators are great just to keep even a little generator that keeps the refrigerator going and stuff like that. It keeps a couple of lights going and stuff. All right. So um, think about that if you're able to and you're in a position to do so. Um, they're great things to have. Learn first aid and CPR so that you can help people that maybe are injured in the disaster, right? So that's a good thing to learn as well. Red Cross obviously offers Red Cross um, CPR classes, uh, first aid classes, but any place that offers those classes is a good thing to do. And, and so, and think about those critical supplies we talked about earlier, those kits, right? Evacuation planning, important, right? Um, um, do you live in an area that is likely to be exposed to the hazards and if so? Think about those evacuation plans. Think about those evacuation routes. Where are you going to go to if you have to leave your home? Um, have that in your plan. If the authorities advise you to evacuate your area, be prepared to leave immediately. Grab your bags, grab your loved ones, grab your pets, get in the vehicle and get out. They don't say those things lightly because evacuating people causes chaos. But if it's a life and death situation and the local authorities are saying to you, get out, please heed their advice. If you don't, you've got to be self-sufficient. All right. No one's going to come and help you. That's the bottom line. All right. So either evacuate or if you don't evacuate, know that no one's going to come and you are going to need to be self-sufficient maybe for a, a period of days. Um, Shelter in place planning. That's what we said, right? Um, if, you, if you're going to stay, make sure you have all that stuff we talked about, okay? Because um, it's going to be reliant upon yourself. Monitor the weather, please, you know. Um, 
There's so many places to get information. There's, there's no good excuse anymore saying, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where to look. There's so many places to get weather information websites or if you've got your phone uh get battery backup battery packs to to back up for your for your cell phones as well they're great to have they don't cost a lot of money uh, on the whole but it's a great backup thing to have as well um download the red cross app i think i mentioned that right it's free to download not much is free these days so you know download the app um and um, understand your community's plan to notify individuals of with disabilities. So if you uh, have somebody in your home that has access and functional needs or know a neighbor with, with that, you know, find out what the local emergency manager, which every municipality in New Jersey has, the local OEM, Office of Emergency Management, find out if they have a plan in place to communicate or do they have a register of your address that you will need assistance if um, if if you need to evacuate. So go and knock on that door in the local OEM's office and say, hey, what's the plan here? Hey, here's my address. I'll need help if I have to evacuate. You need to know that and you need to know where I live. OK, think about that register um, um, register ready as well. OK, um, they're, they're really important things to do. Um, Monitor them, the weather for the duration of the event, if you can, by any means that you can, so you know what's going on. If you can, and you're able to, protect your home and belongings before, reinforce the doors and the windows, you know, if you are on the coast, you're going to put, you know, um, uh, coverings on the windows and stuff. Bring in loose objects from the deck um, that are, so they don't fly around and hit somebody. Uh, fly around and damage your home or smash your windows, you know, put them underneath the deck, maybe tie them down. So bring those kind of things in. Okay. Um, maybe put them in the garage. If you've got a garage, um, whatever you need to do, um, keep the gutters and drains free of debris is always a good, good tip. Stop, top, stop parliaments, your protective materials, um, uh, you know, and if you live in flood zones, you know, consider those bigger jobs of elevating the heating system or the generator or the water heater So, if, if you are prone to for flooding. Waterproof the basement. Get a sump pump put in if your basement floods on a regular basis. Get, um, um, what are those drains called? The French drains as well, you know, things like that. And renters and flood insurance and contents insurance. Important things to have. This tells you the difference between a hurricane watch and a warning. Um, um, a hurricane watch um, is be ready to, to, to act. Something possible is coming, whether it's a tornado warning or a watch. It's, you know, you need to get your stuff together now. You need to think about what's going on. And if there's a warning, certainly in the cases of hurricanes, that's usually issued within 36 hours of the hurricane coming. Pretty much all the models for the hurricanes have all agreed it's coming in a specific pathway and it's going to come your way. And that's why there's a tropical storm or hurricane warning. You're going to get affected by this in one way or the other. Um, so then you need to start to execute your plans. Evacuation notice in effect in your location. You've got to know what to do. Keep an eye on the situation um, and respond accordingly. If you need to evacuate, go or shelter in place. Um, you know, those are your two options, really, right? Go or stay, uh, depending on the situation. Um, for the most part, people shelter in place. We already talked about evacuation routes, but yeah, if you're ordered to, I can't emphasize enough. Do that. Oh, look, and <laughs> I mentioned it's about the emergency app again. <laughs> well, um, so, um, but that's important, right? Check for emergency shelter locations. If Red Cross has opened shelters, it's going to be on the Red Cross emergency app. There'll be a map there, and it will tell the address, tell you the address of the shelters that are open in the state. Don't return home until you're safe to do so. Um, if you're sheltering in place, things like turn, 
the refrigerator and freezer to the coldest setting and only open it when absolutely necessary. So it, it maintains the life of, of any perishables you've got inside. Um, close the windows and doors and hurricane shutters or blinds or whatever. Um, so if the window does break, there's another barrier there so it doesn't come inside. Um, uh, stay away from the glass windows and doors. Uh, try to get to a, a safer place. We often go down in the basement um, or hunker down on the first floor. I rarely go on the top floor, um, well, especially if you've got trees nearby, right? You know, you don't want to be sheltering in place on the top floor and the second floor. You want to be either, if you've got a basement, that's a good place to go, or on the first floor, but certainly not on the top floor if you've got trees in your in your area uh, hovering around. Um, um so um, uh, notify family members of your plans and, and if you've got something going on in your area. All right. Turn around, don't drown, right? Yeah, we all want to do that. Avoid floodwaters. So many people I watch just drive through floodwaters and then get stuck. You know, it's, it's just no, there's no point to it. So don't take the chance in the first place. Remember, water is the greatest threat to safety in these types of disasters. You never know what's in flood waters either. There could be live power lines, um, which you don't know about. Uh, there could be all kinds of debris underneath. There could be potholes. Lots of things that you can't see that could um, cause serious injury. Um, yeah, there's some points there, which are pretty obvious, really. Don't mean me to really say much more than that. When in doubt, throw it out, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, when you come back, throw your food out, just start again. <laughs> you know, it's, it's probably the best bet, right? If it's, it's perishable. Um, you know, wear a protective, uh, protective clothing when appropriate. Um, disinfect and clean everything that got wet. Um, avoid drinking tap water until you know it's safe, okay? Until then, um, uh, resort to uh, uh, um, packaged water. Um, and take your time. Pace yourself, right? A lot of people die in disasters when they're cleaning out their home because they want to get everything out so fast and and they don't give them some time to pace themselves and end up having heart attacks and stuff, you know, because of overexertion and stress. The stress of the disaster and then overexerting yourself on top of that is a recipe for disaster. So take your time and pace yourself. You're no good if you're if you're seriously injured. And they're good to anyone, right? So, got to look after yourself. Work with partners. Take your time. Have safety gear. Just tread carefully. And then finally, we finish with the app. All right. 35 different severe weather and emergency alerts to keep you and your loved ones safe. It's a great app. I, I And I'm not just saying that because I'm Red Cross. It really is a good app. It's very well designed. It's very intuitive. Um, I'll finish with this. My sisters, my sister-in-law, sorry, two of them live in North Carolina. Uh, one of them is particularly oblivious to a lot of things that go around her, bless her. I love her to bits, but um, she has no awareness of what's going on and doesn't look at the weather ever. So I have set up alerts on my phone. So when a tornado warning or watch occurs in her area in North Carolina, in the Raleigh area, that um, if that happens, I call her up and say, hey, you need to pay attention because there's a tornado warning in your area. Get down in your basement and get to, get take cover. And she's like, oh, is there? Yes. <laughs> so I use it for that sometimes just to keep her, you know, safe from up here in New Jersey and she's down in North Carolina, right? So um, <laughs> it's a great app. So uh, great alerts, you know, it does all kinds of I've got some first aid stuff on there as well. We do have a separate first aid app as well. And we even have a pet first aid app uh, as well. So mm. we've got all kinds of things going on in, in Red Cross. We are, are tech savvy big time in Red Cross. So um, with that, we have finished. No more of the Englishman talking his, 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 his behind off. Um, you can have a respite now and uh, 
be happy to answer any questions as best I can if there is any. Uh, but thank you, regardless of taking the time to listen to my dulcet tones uh, and, and, and and hopefully making you a little bit more aware and, 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 and more aware about preparing ourselves and our neighbours. And with that, I'll hand you back. All right. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. I actually just downloaded the app onto my phone. Oh, great. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'll see how I, I do like it. Um, everyone can feel free to um, unmute themselves if they have any questions or comments um, about this program. Feel free. Um, I hope that you all do go ahead and download this app because I think it'd be very uh, helpful, especially with how weather is going to uh, get worse as we continue. Um, Kathy Riley said, thank you for the helpful info. I need to drop off. Aida said, thank you. Is there a Red Cross crib sheet for setting up a go bag? Yes, like, there is. In other words, Absolutely. Okay. And I can share that with with you. And if, if you wish, and we can you can do with it. Where we, are. we have a number of different checklists, safety checklists, for sure. Would it be possible provide. for you to excuse me? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, it, would it be possible for you to send that to my email and then I can send it to everyone uh, on on that signed up for the program? Certainly. Absolutely. OK, so that's what I'll do, Aida. I will get. Paul will send me the information and I will make sure I get it out to um, everyone and then they can look it over and make sure they have their, their go bag ready to go. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? So one comment I wanted to make was because we made that mistake, you know, uh, Paul mentioned those very inexpensive, fantastic battery packs that they sell to keep your cell phone charged. Some of them would, I, I don't know, they would they would just charge your phone for a week. Uh, I found that are quite inexpensive. But here is the problem. I made this mistake myself and that's why I'm remembering is that you have to have, <laughs> that pack doesn't help you if you don't charge it ahead of the storm, <laughs> ahead yeah. of the power outage and you know where it is. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest problem I had was mine is black. It's a square little black piece. And it was in the in the back of my car, between the front row and the back seat, on the floor with the back, black uh, car interior. And one time I had a power failure. I was running all over the house like a maniac looking for that thing. And eventually when I found it, it was only 25% charged. So... One of the things to remember is not just have these things, that <laughs> item has to be charged beef or keep it charged. As soon as you hear something is coming, put them all on charge, make sure they're all charged and ready to go. Right? That's <laughs> and that was hilarious to run around yeah, the place that's a looking good, for the thing. <laughs> that's right. A good lesson learned. Thank yes. you. Yes. A good lesson. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have any more questions or comments, um, I thank Chitra and Paul for these very, uh, very informative information. I appreciate it. Um, and please feel free to go to um, parsippanylibrary.org to see if there's any other wonderful programs that we're giving out. Um, we'll be, we, you know, we'd love to see you there. Uh, Jay did say thank you very much. So with that, I will bid you all good night. Um, and thank you again, Thanks Paul for joining. and Chitra. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good thank night, you. everyone. Thank you, Paul. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Good, good night. night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Paul. Bye. Thanks.